It's that time again for the Hot Takes with Carrie and Keelan. We are talking episode number 14, and it is the 9th of February. And I'm excited to chat with Keelan about some of the things that I've been seeing in the market recently. Competition is heating up. And Keelan, what are you starting to see with your side of things? Yeah, we, uh, you know, um, it's really exciting that we've been talking about this forever. Rates turning, rates going down, and sure enough, and we knew the competition was going to get stiffer. Remember how we were talking about, uh, you know, seller credits for buy downs and things, and trying to warn everybody it's only a matter of time before that's going to, you know, it's going to get more competitive. Right. Seller credits going to go away, and then we're actually going to see bidding wars. And we're there. I mean, I don't know about you, Carrie, but I've seen quite a few. I had three offers go in last weekend. One went one hundred and fifty thousand over ask. There was over ten offers. Okay. Um, waiving financing, waiving all the contingencies we saw back in the day, you know, inventory is very low. We're seeing this competition and when rates go down, try to warn you, it's only going to get worse. Right. I'm seeing the same thing. Like I recently was able to land a house for one of my clients and we went out over 12 to 13 offers and we were not the highest and we went about $250,000 over ask. So I was kind of shocked that that's where we had to go to get the house, but we ended up landing it for that buyer and he was super excited about it. So I'm definitely seeing the market shift as well. Way to go, Rockstar. We hey, ended up getting thanks. one of the three as well, but like they were, it was a battle, you know? So right. you did your buyer, did your buyer end up getting the home? Did you guys land the deal? Not on that one, not on the one that was 150 over. It was a okay. separate one, multiple offers. So we won one of them. There's seven offers on the other one. Um, and we ended up getting it, but okay. they paid over ass pretty significantly. We waived financing. We had a 14 day close. I mean, we went as aggressive as you could possibly get. Okay. Um, super stoked on my team though. We, uh, we went from, uh, getting the contract to clear to close in nine days. Ooh, congratulations. That is a feat to be had for sure. Yeah. So yeah. we were just like literally hanging out for the last couple of days till it actually funded, which it actually funded yesterday. Oh, um, so we congrats. had nothing to do, but that's the big deal. I mean, you, you work with a good lender, you have an amazing agent like Carrie Ray, yeah. and, uh, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta be aggressive with these offers and you gotta talk the talk and, um, you gotta throw it down. So the right. only reason we got the house is we weigh financing with a super short close. Okay. And your buyer obviously was, was well qualified to where financing wasn't an issue and they were comfortable waiving that part of that contingency. Yeah. And we pre underwrote the file. So that's okay. a huge deal. So we pre underwrite all of our files to make sure that we've already gone through the underwriting process. So now it's just executing what we already know, right. um, which makes it a lot smoother for everybody. It's the gets rid of all the unknowns. You're just executing what you already know. Well, and I have to say that I, part of the reason why my transaction got accepted was because I was very communicative with the other agent. She even said, kudos to you, Carrie. You're part of the reason why we chose this offer, because I was dedicated to communicating with them consistently and really advocating for my buyer. And, you know, it's a combination of things besides, you know, having a great lender like Keelan and, you know, a great offer in place, but having an agent that's there to bat for you. So I felt really, um, I felt really a lot of gratitude that, that she let me know that that was part of the reason we got the deal accepted. So, yeah, I could definitely vouch for you on that. I mean, yeah. your communication is in fantastic with agents, like mm -hmm. good agents, right? Listing agents, they want to get a deal done. And, right. you know, if you try to play like hardball and not really communicate and, you know, not work together to come to, you know, cause there's multiple offers Right. I, we understand that the listing agent wants to pick the one that it's most likely to close, right? Correct. And it's in their person's benefit. But you communicate, Carrie. So you you know you, you're good at finding out how how can we make this work and right. like in a positive like way of of not just like we're on the other side, but we're a team on trying to figure out how mutually it makes sense for everybody, right? Right. It's a, and that's what I that's what I said to the, this individual was like this is a team effort and how can we make this work for everybody? Finding out what the seller's needs are, what their requirements are, what what are those pressure points that we can use to leverage to make our offer as attractive as possible. So I can only imagine if you, you like you don't communicate. I, we've seen this happen or I have. I work with a lot of agents. I've seen this happen where you find out you missed out by a couple thousand bucks or something that you could have done. Right. But you didn't communicate well enough to the listing agent to figure out what can my people do to make this work. And that's sad. I mean, 
it's only just a small little mi bit you missed out on to right. now they didn't accept your offer, you know? You know, and sometimes, you know, it's up to our, our buyers, really, it's their decision ab about like how we tailor our offer. Granted, I'm there to guide them the best that I can, but we can only do what they're comfortable with doing. And sometimes I've seen it happen before, you know, sometimes you have to lose a house in order to understand like really kind of what you have to do to, to get in the game. So luckily enough, I didn't have to worry about that with this particular buyer. He was, he was ready to go and was, was excited to purchase, but it just felt good to win. You know, these last yeah. months have been so, so stressful <laughs> and difficult. <laughs> so yeah. it felt good to like get one in the can. So, well, on the lending side, we can be pretty aggressive too. And I, I pride myself on that. So, you know, putting in an aggressive offer, short close, you know, right. something that's pre underwritten, but we also communicate with the listing agent too. So calling the listing agent, because they want to ultimately pick the lender that they're most confident that's going to close. Absolutely. So, so yeah, we always make sure and Carrie makes sure that I'm always calling uh, all the listing agents and uh, bragging. You know, I have a lot of five-star reviews. I want to put in their face at how good of a job that we do and how confident I am with our buyers. I brag about all of our buyers, like, and make sure that they understand that we're here to perform and close. And, you know, between that and your communication, all these additional little steps uh, sets us above the rest. And that's really important. Right. I agree. You need a winning team and Keelan and I certainly are that. So, <laughs> um, so can you that. tell me a little bit what's happening with rates right now? I know that they improved after the beginning of the year and they've kind of leveled off a little bit. What's happening with the rates right now? This level area, they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. I mean, granted, they're much better than the, where they were in October. I think that there's just a lot of uncertainty with the market right now. The Fed was talking about uh, you know, doing a, a, a reduction in March. And then Powell just went on 60 Minutes this week. This is, you know, relevant and opened his big mouth again. And I think he does it on purpose. He's out there talking about, they asked him if he's going to cut rates in March. And he was like, which is the next Fed meeting. And he said, no. So the market's re responding accordingly. But they, they get it. Like just Powell's words alone affect the market. So right. everybody's hanging on to every word. So with that being said, you know, I feel like we could be trending for better rates but it's just kind of staying level because powell's out flapping his gums unfortunately being all hawkish <laughs> and you know but he's doing that on purpose he's trying to like ease into these to these rate cuts which doesn't make any sense to me i mean they're talking about cutting three to five times next year well then get are to you talking about this year 2020 yeah okay, okay yeah yeah so then get to cutting already it's the same problems we had before right they kept they made rates too low they kept them low for too long right. you know they you know they they just took their sweet time transitory inflation it's just too little too late unfortunately and this is no different and if they overcook this we're going into a recession which is a concern for all that's not bad for real estate, to be honest. Rates go down in a recession. Homes have appreciated five out of the six recessions we've had. Right. So it's not the end of the world for that. But, you know, for people out there and our families and our livelihood, it's kind of scary. You right. Know? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think, you know, hearing that he said he's not going to drop rates in March, you know, it's not a huge surprise that he's, but hopefully he just doesn't raise them. And that's what I'm thinking is that hopefully there's no raising anymore. They're just going to slowly start to keep dropping so we can kind of start to accelerate things again. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. I mean, every I mean, they're all pretty open about the fact that they're going to be cutting rates next year. And the next meeting then, if they're not going to do it in March, would be April 30th through May 1st okay. is the next one. And there's a 75% chance, according to uh, the experts in, in uh, futures, they actually bet on this stuff. Right. That is a 75% chance that they're going to cut rates then. Okay. I mean, the reality is they have to cut rates next year. They know it. Everybody knows it. Um, so it's just a matter of time, quite frankly. Well, I am seeing more activity. I mean, I've got a couple listings that I'm actively working on. So I do see the inventory is starting. There's starting to be more inventory to come out because I've got some buyers I've been working with for months and it's just, there's not a lot to see. So I'm hoping that, you know, with the springtime shift, you know, interest rates coming down that we'll start to see more inventory. So some of the people that are really serious about purchasing a home right now can actually, find something that they're really going to love. Yeah, and it's going to get interesting because Black Knight came out this week and said the average, and this is nationally, ad, 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 if I could talk, average equity 
<laughs> right now it's 300,000, <laughs> 300, which 240,000 they can access. And I've mentioned this before, people are sitting on a boatload of cash with a low interest rate, just not sure what to do, but they do want to move. They're just afraid to get rid of that. So, uh, you know, what's going to happen? They think by 6% rates, it's going to unlock all those step up buyers. And then that's right. going to free up even more inventory because I mean, we are way behind right now. Um, NAR came out this week, uh, National Association of Realtors, and they mm -hmm. released a report. There's a million in inventory right now, which is 1.15 was previous. So we're down on that. But there's 330,000 in contract that's included in that number. And a lot of people don't realize that that's only 660,000 nationally that we have an in inventory. It's still very, very low. That's not and much. <laughs> like, yeah, way low. Yeah. Some like 14 million households out there. That I mean, so I mean, and then building is still down. So uh, we have a supply and demand issue that's going to continue on for years, quite frankly, right. which is great because that means appreciation. So either the thing is, you're either going to buy now, gain that appreciation, or you're going to pay more and get on the other end of that appreciation where you're going to buy the house later on for a lot more than you are right now. Right. Well, and one thing I have to, you know, make sure I say to everybody is really the best time to buy is when you're ready to buy. You know, granted, we, we've talked about this, you know, it's better to buy yesterday <laughs> when you look at yeah. all the numbers. But yeah. really, like you can't, I know a lot of people get really kind of try and time the market and, and worry about interest rates. And I, I really believe that you kind of have to make moves when you have to. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to move. Maybe you've got a change in household, like a divorce, or you're having children and you really need a bigger home. So just, I say to everybody out there that's listening, know that when you're ready is going to be the best time for you. And we'll try and do the best that we can to make the, um, the terms as favorable as possible if we're able. I'm so happy you said that, actually, because, I yeah. mean, I get caught up in the data as, an, right. as a mortgage nerd. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd be doing you a huge disservice if I didn't tell you. And it's my job to save you money and give you the facts. And there's a very, very good chance I'm going to be spot on. But there's other factors in life. Right. Life happens like, right. you know, and I'll start this process from helping somebody with their credit and saving for a year before we get there. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter when you buy. It's just about buying and getting out of that renting pool where you're throwing all your money away. And the best time for you is the best time for us always. So, right. you know, I guess we're coming out of the most like loving place in our hearts of like, you know, here's the information. Do what you will. Yes, it's better for you to buy sooner than to wait. Right. But sometimes we can't. And that's fine, too. Um, you know, let's just figure out what needs to happen to get you there. Well, and having these conversations continually, I think is important because, you know, as you and I have started, you know, we started doing this like in October, I think is when we started doing this together. You know, yeah. the market has changed quite significantly as as to strategy. And so know that whatever market we're in currently, Keelan and I will do the best for you to make sure that you're getting the best opportunity based on what's happening in the market. So just know that, you know, things are changing and they're going to be constantly changing. It's just a matter of keeping up with the information and the data that we have and also the experience like us, our, our real world active experience to what we're seeing in the market as we're working with buyers and sellers. So if it's not the right time to buy right now, don't worry, you can still get ready. And I really believe that having a conversation with Keelan and I in the beginning, even before you're really ready, just so you understand what it's going to take and what you need to do to save and to make sure you're not doing anything, you know, wonky with your credit or your credit cards to make sure that your financial profile is as positive as possible. So I say, if you've got questions, reach out to Keelan and I, we're here to help you. You can reach me at 206. 330-6985. And you can get me at 206-321-4941. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to see what opportunities are going to be coming next week. I say that every time I talk to you, but it really is kind of <laughs> fun to be able to, you know, talk about the changes and to um, be able to show people that we're, we're our, our, our needle is pretty spot on. So yeah, yeah. And it's a moving target. So it's always new and changing. Uh, it's a living, you know, breathing thing. And, uh, like you said, very different than it was just a few months ago. Right. Yeah. Well, awesome. Okay. Well, Keelan, thanks you for your time today and I will see you next week. See you next week. Okay. Thanks.